we absolutely do not know that the universe is infinite. And uh, it may well be that it's finite the way the Earth is finite. That, you know, we leave New York City, we travel in a straight line. It's, maybe we'd have to swim a little, get on a boat, but you travel in a straight line. You're going to come back to New York City again. Right. So similarly, we could leave the Milky Way galaxy. We could watch it recede behind us. We could travel in as straight a line as possible and find ourselves coming back, back to the Milky Way and again. Down. And so the interesting thing is that also means that if you look at distant galaxies, mm -hmm. the light is also traveling all the way around the universe. So it could be that some of those distant galaxies are the Milky Way and we're seeing the light from the Milky Way wrap all the way around and come back to us. So we'd be seeing the Milky Way in the past. Wow. So we'd, it would be hard to know. Like maybe we'd see an active black hole quasar with jets flying out yeah. in the early phases of the Milky Way and we'd think, oh, that's just a different galaxy. Wow. Yeah. Young galaxies look very different from mature galaxies. Right. <laughs> and we used to think that there were different kinds of objects in the outer universe, like quasars. Yeah. Why are they all distant? How come there's not a quasar right next door mm -hmm. with these monstrous nuclear emissions and we had to like figure out that it's likely just younger galaxies and maybe we used to look like a quasar and we don't anymore right, right. so yeah. even a distant galaxy looking back at us is seeing us in the past given the light travel time so we could still look like a quasar to a distant galaxy wow. like we're well, right, i have yes. this huge active galactic right. nucleus because okay. they're not seeing us as we are now no they're not they're seeing as, as, as we were, were. Yeah. billions of wow. years ago yeah uh -huh. oh my god so you that's know what? the beauty I, we get I to see the past some of that sativa right now <laughs> 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 and then yeah. it gets more because there are reasons that people start to suspect that there are extra spatial dimensions and that they are not only finite but really technically really small like okay. that journey to go all the way around them is something that would would happen incredibly quickly and it's too small for us to like literally stick our hands in that direction in some sense. So we we're looking everywhere. Those extra dimensions are everywhere, but we can't actually notice them. Wow. And so what does it mean for a dimension to be smaller than another dimension? What does yeah. that even mean? So think of like a straw is yeah. a good example where it's a two dimensional surface. So a straw is small in one direction on the surface, right? If you you think there's a direction in which it's totally wrapped up and small. And then there's a long direction. You could glue the top end to the bottom end of a straw to make that long direction also finite. So then you just travel around the road. It could be really big. It could be, you know, the mile around, uh, but still be connected. But it's only a few millimeters around in this direction. In this other dimension. So around. literally the length of traveling before you come back to where you started is smaller. So most of how you use a straw does not access that other dimension. It's yeah. really the length, because you're trying to get the liquid from here to here. Yeah. And With so that, right? yeah. most of your, yeah. you, you're using the long dimension yeah. of the straw. So in we then the question we start to ask is, what if the universe is a kind of space-time origami when it's created in the Big Bang, that all the dimensions are wrapped up, in, maybe in very complicated ways, like the dimension of the straw being wrapped up, but one dimension just gets very, very big, or in our case, three. Get three, very, three big very dimensions. big. We have three big dimensions. We have time, which is a fourth. So we, we know there's up, down, north, south, east, west. That's it. You specify those things and you definitely know where you are in space. You specify time and we can actually meet. Right. Here we are. Um, but those extra directions just maybe did never expand. And so one of the things even that I'll work on and string theorists will work on people is uh, why would only three dimensions get large? if those other dimensions exist. So it could be that uh, we'll understand the large connectedness, finite nature of space by looking in like really high energy uh, accelerator experiments. Because people have asked at the Large Hadron Collider, could you perceive these extra dimensions if they exist? If there was another dimension as big as the three that we're in, mm -hmm. would it completely manifest to us? Probably, there's a hitch. So you would think, yes, as long as that dimension was very large, then we would be talking about a world in which this did not confine us, right? So, so, so let's say I have skin, which seems to separate my inside and my outside. If there was another dimension, you could do like one of those spooky surgeries without yeah. puncturing any skin. You could just like go in there and touch people's organs. Like this would not be a separation of inside and outside. Some people argue that the reason why the universe is three dimensional is because the universe tries to be many different ways. Like, well, there may have been an infinite number of big bangs in the past and the future. You can't really talk about it in temporal relativeness, but if the universe created a two-dimensionally large universe with all the rest rolled up and small, you couldn't have organisms in that universe to ask the questions. 
Wow. So you'd need at least three. And then let's say you had four spatial dimensions. Then you have the problem of things drift away from each other in such a way that it's hard to have organized systems. In three dimensions, it could be optimal for particles to get together and make molecules mm -hmm. and molecules to make macroscopic objects. Mm -hmm. If you add a fourth dimension, mm -hmm you're adding a degree of freedom of where things can hang out and possibly never then find each other. Yeah, wow. ever it, it again. Could be way, if you think about the volume of the universe is going up radically with the volume of dimensions, yes. then you're diluting everything in the, the universe The concentration of what could be. So the fact that yeah. you're even asking that question means you are a being in an optimized universe to even pose the question in the first place. So the two-dimensional people couldn't ask this question? Right, because they couldn't be two-dimensional right. people because the structures are too simple to allow. And four-dimensional people, there's too much too, too, much, too much play space. space. Right. So let's take it, let's take, you, your first question was, would we know it if the other dimensions were large? Here's the hitch. There is an argument that we could be glued to a kind of a membrane which is a three-dimensional surface floating in yeah, this I'm higher sure. dimensional space. And yeah, we're like so glued glues us to there? it. The way the fundamental forces work between- um, They keep us they, there. They keep right. us on the membrane. And the only wow. thing that happily goes off the membrane is, is gravity itself. Right. So that all other forces are glued to this membrane. That's wow. where they live. So that you would think like a particle to you interacting with that membrane could be a string in the higher dimensional space. Passing through your space, who's manifesting end, right, as a particle. Manifesting as a particle. So like imagine cutting a string, you would it would look to you like a dot. Right. An infinitely thin string. So and, and that I would, is so wild. The way I think about in physics. two dimensions, yeah. I think of passing a, a hollow sphere through two dimensions. What would that look like to the two dimensional people? Mm -hmm. They'd see a dot and they'd say, oh, that's cool. Yeah, right. Oh, then it becomes like a circle. circle. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Then it maximizes out at the diameter, but they don't know this. And then it gets smaller, then it gets mm -hmm. a point and disappears. Mm -hmm. And and they have no idea they have no that idea. Even sphere and, and, just and all kinds of mystical, existence. magical right. hypotheses right. come out. Yeah. And the scientists analyze it. Yeah. We just say stuff pops in and out of existence. We don't know why. So one of the, yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that we've worked on with extra dimensions that make them not just an oddity, but maybe something like we've already that. observed. One of the things we've worked on on our extra dimensions. This is, <laughs> this is, Jana, what's As in your you basement? <laughs> the interesting thing there that we're, people have thought about is that maybe something like dark energy is actually a quantum phenomenon trapped in the extra dimensions that we can't perceive the extra dimensions directly, but we're indirectly perceiving them through the dark energy. Or, right. or dark matter is regular matter in the higher dimensions leaking over. Into, and, uh, right, and through just, this membrane. And we're which just doing this, and it's just mysteriously there. Yeah, yeah we people have definitely wondered so if dark matter can have to do with the extra dimensions. So gravity is the thing that is the medium? Is that, is that the deal? Gravity is space-time, so gravity can't be confined gotcha. to Otherwise, there would be no meaning to the extra dimension. Stupid. You so, didn't. 